I'm going to show you how you can collect Stripe payments in mini extensions form. These payments will then be associated with Airtable records. So let's go ahead and start with a very basic example here. In this example, the user doesn't specify a product or a quantity or anything. We just have a predefined price that we want them to pay for. So I'll just go ahead and set up a test email here and submit the form. Once we submit the form, we get redirected to Stripe. This is currently running in test mode, but in real life, you'd just run it in production. Um, in test mode, I'll be using a fake credit card. This is a standard fake credit card to use in test mode. And all the other information here is, is not real. So this is not a real payment, but when you set this up, you can collect real payments. And notice how the email here is, is the same email that I entered in the form. So the payment that we make in Stripe is associated with that same email we entered into the form. We submit this payment, then get redirected to a success message. Now this success message can be customized and you can also choose to send your users instead to a custom URL. I wanna show you now what that payment that we just created looks like in the Airtable. So we can see this is the email I used and then we can see that the payment status is paid. Now notice how the one above it doesn't say paid. This is because the user used the form, created the product, uh, created the record, got redirected to Stripe, but never actually finished the Stripe payment. Now let's see what that payment that we just did looks like in Stripe. So I'll go over here, I'll select the customer, I'll see that payment over here, that's good. And um, one, shouldn't, one thing I wanna uh, showcase here is the record ID. So each payment we make is associated with the exact record ID so that you can cross check between Airtable and Stripe. Now I wanna set up a, an example that is a lot more sophisticated and it's an example in which you know, the user can select a product, they can select a quantity and stuff like that. Let's start with product. So I am going to be selling t-shirts, pants, and jackets. Each one of those has a price associated with it. This is my link table. Now the table that will have the form is this table. I'll see here that I have email product, which links to that table. Um, I have a lookup field product price that showcases the price of that particular product, the name of the product, and then the quantity, and then the payment status. So for example, user A at example.com here bought a t-shirt, it was 15 bucks, and they bought one. User B here bought, a, bought pants, they were 30 bucks, and they bought two, so they paid a total of 60. Now let's go and actually set up the form. Let me refresh here. So if you have never set up a form before, please follow this URL to go through step-by-step -step on how to do that. After you do that, you'll want to add the email field. And then you'll, in my case, I'll be adding the email field, product field, product price field to show the actual price in the form. And then allow the user to select a quantity in the form. So let's go ahead and do that. So I got email, product, quantity. We also want the product price. Let me sort these here. That looks good. Okay, so let's move on here. Now let's go to Stripe Payments. And in Stripe Payments, you'll want to enable payment collection with Stripe. Once you do that, we'll ask you for two API keys. When you get started, please use test API keys. You saw how I just was able to test the full system so that we know that everything's working. So, you, you know, just use the test keys to, test keys to make sure that everything is working. And then once you see that everything is working, swap the test keys with the real keys. Now, um, once you follow that URL, you'll, be, you'll land on a page like this. So you'll want to grab the publishable key and secret key. Notice how here it says viewing test data. Make sure when you're first setting this up that it is actually viewing test data. Once you're done testing and you've completed everything and everything works, turn off viewing test data and then copy those keys again and then save them in the form. This is very important. If you remain in test data, you'll not be able to collect payments. So you do want to actually test in test data, but then you want to swap out those test keys with the actual real keys that are not for testing. Cool, so let's move on. Next thing we have here is Stripe payment status. So this is an Airtable, Airtable field that we'll choose. Um, this is a field that you'll need to create in Airtable. It needs to be a single line text field. So make sure it has the type single line text. And the goal of this field is just to track whether or not the user paid. Um, so yeah, let's continue. Next, after that, we'll select the product name. This is a lookup field in our case. Um, and it just, um, it's a lookup field because we'll need to show the name within the checkout page. 
Next here is the product price. So in our case, it's product price, also a lookup field. Um, next here is quantity. This is just a number field on the form. The user will un enter the quantity so that we calculate the total price. After that, we'll be choosing an email. Um, so in my case, I've already added that to the form. And if you'd like to change the currency, go ahead. Let's go ahead and save this. All right, let's try this form out. So I'll start with an email. Um, I'll do this again. And then I'll select a price. Let's do t-shirt. I'll see the price of the t-shirt. And then I'll do, let's say, three t-shirts. Let's go ahead and save. Cool. We get redirected to Stripe. Three t-shirts, 15 each. Notice the name here. That's the product name. So just to break it down here, product name, quantity, price. This is all coming from your table um, and the email we entered on that form. Let's do the same thing here. All right. Cool. And this again, this again, and this again. Cool. Now let's go ahead and pay for this. Like I said, this is all test, test mode. So you can test this as much as you'd like in test mode. Cool. So we created that record. Now let's go see what that looks like in the Airtable now. So this is the record I just created. I bought a t-shirt. It was 15 bucks and I, I got three and I paid for it. Let's see what it looks like in, um, in, Stripe. So I, I go here. I paid 45 bucks. Like I said, um, the product record ID is here so you can see it. And one thing I want to show is what if I had a record in Airtable, I wanted to see the payment for it in Stripe. All I would really have to do is copy that URL, get that product, uh, get that record ID. This is that last part. And then actually, if I just search for the record ID and Stripe. Stripe is smart enough to search for the metadata so I can find the exact payment that that record is associated with. And conversely, if I want to find the um, record ID, uh, if I want to find the record in Airtable based on the Stripe payment, I can copy that record ID, go to Stripe, then I can just um, leave my table ID here and then do the record ID right after, click enter, and it'll be taken directly to that record in Airtable. So, yep.